I never thought I'd say this, but I bought a pair of Crocs last oh, week. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> don't think I'd ever say that sentence actually... either. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Chill Lips Team Podcast with me, Heather Steele. Today I'm joined by Vanessa Manrad and Maya Lucky. Welcome, girls. Hi. Hi. So as Charlotte explained when she hosted the podcast last week, we've had a little bit of a refresh, sort of just it up slightly. We've got some new, more streamlined sections. And yeah, we're currently seated at this lovely table. It is a temporary setup. The studio and podcast space is getting a nice facelift. So hopefully that will be ready for us to be in in a couple of weeks. But for now, we're here... I'm liking the table. I know the girls did last week, but yeah. yeah. I feel like a presenter at a TV show. (laughs) (laughs) Like the weather. News channel. I'm the weather lady. (laughs) Weather, news, presenter. (laughs) So the first section is new and noteworthy. Maya, I'm going to come to you first for, yeah, three things or two or three things you're really liking at the moment. I mean, if you follow me on Instagram, I post about it like every other day. So, (laughs) sorry, but I'm obsessed with FS8. Pilates. Yes, tell me about this because I've sort of yeah seen it, but I want to know like exactly what it is. Yeah, sure. So it's a reformer Pilates studio. They have a bit of a unique mix throughout the week of classes that go from anything from sort of like stretching, if you want to just like lengthen your limbs. Then they do these blast ones. They're quite. I was going to say, tough. that sounds quite, yeah. like, it sounds like it that sounds. That scares me. I'm <laughs> yeah. already like, oh no, <laughs> I'm going to the stretching one. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then they have the original, which is my favourite, and then a remix, which is a, basically a mixture of all of those classes into oh, one. Oh, nice. I've always enjoyed going to the gym, but I have to say, I've never found something that makes me really, like, addicted mm-hmm. to working out. Mm. And this does that. Like, I get really excited to go. Yeah, that's really interesting. I started going to Reformer Collective because they've opened a studio in Brighton. Yes. I've never done any Reformer stuff at all. I've done sort of at-home yoga and Pilates, mm. which obviously isn't the same. But I think I've done seven Reformer classes now. And again, it's the same thing. Like, I'm going at, like... 7 a.m. Yeah. And it's a half hour walk away to go to these classes. Yeah, same. It's 30 minutes from where I live as well. Yeah. But you still feel like motivated. I'm motivated yeah, by it. Yeah. Which honestly is unheard of yeah. for me. And I think it's that same thing. I feel like I've finally found something that I actually enjoy. Yeah. Maybe I need to try that. I, I mean, I recommend <laughs> I, I've anyone given to. up on the gym. I'm like, it's, it's just, I just actually said that to a friend the other day. It's just like no motivate. Like, I go, yeah. and you do your workout, you go back home. There's no like yeah. excitement about yeah. it. So this sounds very lovely. Yeah. And and I love it. I'm so into the Pilates lifestyle. You also don't have to wear trainers to the gym, which is great. That's true. Have you got the grip? Have you got the grippy, <laughs> grippy socks? socks? Yeah, I yeah. haven't yet because they give you these little sort of grippy mats. But I was like, if I get to my ten end of the ten classes and I still really enjoy it, love it I should buy some grippy socks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they are essential. To be fair, um, my ones that I was using started to go a bit less grippy mm. and. That makes it 10 times harder. Yeah. <laughs> Slipping off the reform yeah, machine. Extra, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I love it. It's so good. And then my other thing that I'm loving, it's called polynucleotides. Yes. So you spoke about it briefly to me last week. And then si- even since then, I've seen like features about it. I think so. once you hear the word, you start yeah. seeing everywhere because it is kind of like the new buzz thing in aesthetics, I suppose. It's not a filler. It doesn't change the shape of your face in any way. It's not like Botox where it freezes your face mm. and then in the hope to look younger, etc. It's an injectable that is, I believe, is a bio um, stimulator. So it is actually a derivative from salmon DNA, which sounds a bit scary. And that's what people are like, <laughs> oh, oh the fish, like some people said like the fish sperm. Yes. Yeah. So I don't think it's got anything to do with. I don't know the exactly the breakdown, part, but, but that's it's, what it's been sort of like buzzily sort of. Exactly. Yeah. Build as. But you can get it injected anywhere. It stimulates the collagen process in your skin. So okay. effectively it brightens, illuminates any sort of dullness that you want. See. So I've had two rounds of it so far under my eyes. Okay. I've they got one more good. round to go. Oh, thank you very <laughs> so, much. So what's so under here? Yeah. And what's the idea there that it might get rid of any dark circles? Yeah, or... exactly. So darkness, it does help with fine lines, mm-hmm. but it's not like a filler, like I yeah. say. Mm-hmm. Um, it just gives you sort of like that youthfulness back. Is it like a long lasting thing or is it just you you'd have to redo it like with fillers? You you, know? It's actually longer lasting than most other injectables because, I mean, Botox wears off around sort of 12 weeks and based on your metabolism as well, it doesn't last as long mm. if you've got a fast metabolism. Oh, interesting. Fillers do dissolve that. over time and they also shift around your face, which can lead to like looking a bit different. Yeah. Um, but this actually does last quite a long time only because it's 
kick-starting something that is a natural process right. in you already. So just sort of accelerating yeah. something that you want is all, to happen naturally. Exactly. Okay. At the age of 30 right. something, it's all stopping. So I'm like, <laughs> I want to keep it going it. for as long as possible. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Oh, amazing. So yeah, you'd recommend. Yeah, highly recommend. I think you, it's great. Are you happy to say where you got it from? Yes. Or have you got any recommendations? In yeah. Case interested? I go to Dr. Senna. She's just opened actually a new boutique in Barnes. It's very okay. beautiful. Nice. I highly recommend her. Lovely. Nice. Great. Vanessa, cool. what are your new and noteworthy suggestions? Okay, well, first of all, I started watching Ripley this weekend. Oh, wow. Um, what you th- I haven't got around to watching it. Yeah, I really want to, but I just haven't had any, like, dedicated time Well, I've, I've actually it. had, I've had quite a few chats with a few friends about their opinions as well, yeah. because I find it quite interesting, especially in comparison to the original movie. Which everyone who's seen it loves. Yeah, <laughs> and it's obviously a very scenic movie. Mm-hmm. It's, it's very charming characters. Yeah. I mean, you know, Jude Law is. So. <laughs> I'd say it's never looked better, but Jude Law in the holiday for me yeah. is. Oh, I yeah. mean, that was that's like the tan and yeah. the blondish hair There's and the very the rich vibes. Yeah. I was like, I, was like hey, I would, I would move to yeah, Italy yeah, for yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, so like you know, you have that sort of movie and then you start Ripley which is obviously in black and white mm. um, which got a lot of comments yeah. it turns out the director thought it's because it's quite a dark story and he didn't want people to be distracted by the color of this beautiful oh. Italian seaside town so he takes that element away of it when you watch it all you think is like I really want to see this in color <laughs> so I will say I've watched three episodes for so, so far it's very different from the movie yeah like the base storyline is obviously the same but it starts with the characters like tom's character mm. is so different yeah he keeps messing little um, things up not like, so talented yeah. yeah and obviously there's the famous boat scene yes. which uh, everyone's yeah. seen in the in the movie and in the tv show it is so different it has oh, a whole wow. other i don't want to give it away no, because like, no, no, no. I, we were so shocked when we were watching it we were like what, what is happening here right oh, now wow. it turns into this it's almost like weirdly comedic okay. but in a very dark way it's not something for people who want that like fast like gripping mm-hmm. very much like oh my god i want to watch the next episode it's beautiful yeah like, the the scenery is beautiful even the, the shots from it in yeah. the media pack i was like Oof, what exactly. is this a exactly. month ago it's like very stylish and there's yeah there's a sort of sort of system to it like there's these shots every now and then where it's just like he's like filming from below to the top oh. of like and you can just see the top of buildings that keeps happening mm. so i recommend watching it on a quite big screen yeah. like don't watch it on your phone yeah watching on a nice big screen. I do think Andrew Scott is doing a great job yeah. at giving him a new sort of character. Yeah. Because obviously we don't want to see the same thing again. Well, that's what I was going to ask, like, because, yeah, yeah, lots of people have seen yeah. the film and sometimes it can be tricky if you've known and loved something to then delve into a longer series. So do you think it's different enough that it will sort of hold interest in? Yeah, it's very different. It's it very different. There's a lot of things... Like, it starts very different. Yeah. The reason why he goes to Italy is, is a complete different one. Oh. To me, it's enough difference yeah. to still enjoy it. Oh. Oh, um, that is number one. Then a product I've been enjoying oh, yes. is the... I don't know. I mean, I would say Naturium. It's the um, K- KP body scrub and mask. Mm. That I, so I've got keratosis pilaris, and I know a lot of people have. Is that um, the bumpy? Yes, yeah, it's like oh, bumpy dry yeah, skin. Yeah. A lot of brunettes get it. It's like my um, doctor once called it the freckles for brunettes. Oh, interesting. It's like, yeah. yeah it, it, and it's, it's just, it gets a bit annoying, especially in summer. You want to like have nice and soft skin. I see. And I've been using that. I just use it once, twice per week. And then, I mean, obviously if you go in the sun afterwards, you have to put some sunscreen on because oh, it it's like, like extra... it's like a micro exfoliant. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But honestly, the difference it's made, my skin is so soft. Ooh. So I thought I, I thought I have to mention no. it for all the other KP girlies out yeah. there. Yeah. Also before tan, Perfect. Like, oh, that's you're so, you're yeah. so smooth yeah. afterwards, and then you put that tan on, and honestly, no problem. And I'm really scared yeah, of tanning, yeah. so like for me, it's, <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> this is perfect. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so that was a uh, second thing. And then finally, so. last but not least, um, another thing I thought might be nice um, for people that might feel similar mm-hmm. or have similar experience. So I've struggled a bit over the last month with, I've had depression in the past, and I've been in therapy for years now. So recently I've had... Uh, I've had I've had a death in the family mm. and you know sometimes it happens with these sort of things you you're actually fine and then 
there's a tipping point and you just kind of fall back into a hole a little bit. I think something um, like a family death can, yeah. I know when my grandma died, it really affected yeah, me. Yeah, it, 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 it can. can, it can really affect you. And I'm the kind of person I don't let myself grieve as yeah. much. And then it, it hits me harder, like later on. Yeah. But um, I didn't expect I was just going to like, you know, fully fall back, like with my whole mental mm -hmm. health, like, because you could put a whole lot of work in. Yeah. And then, but because like now I've learned quite a lot about coping mechanisms mm -hmm. and how to kind of like differentiate your emotions and your simple functions of your body like I actually like got out of it quite efficiently I'd say and I thought it would be really nice to share a little bit yeah, of that please do. Um, yeah. in case because I know there's a lot of people especially right now I feel like there's a lot of people with the weather changes yeah. the you know you're into the year now long enough for you to be a bit like oh my god am I going to achieve my goals for the year I think <laughs> yeah. people just start there's struggling a lot of heaviness and, in the news yeah. as well like there's lots, exactly there's, there's, a lot there's, going yeah, there's on. a lot of yeah uncertainty so yeah, yeah um I mean, first I'm... things first you have to let yourself like in my case grief mm -hmm. you have to let yourself be sad for a little bit I think let yourself have it and then take little steps like mm -hmm. there is no point being like I'm gonna do exercise now I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do this it's just gonna like you're gonna fall back like straight away and then for me the most important thing was um exercise yeah. and I'm not saying um you have to like go to the gym what I did is go on little walks yeah and then I started running but I would run without a timer without a yeah. you know you just you just jog a little bit you just and that really helps like to keep like the negative emotions at bay and because like we get so exhausted from all the emotions mm. inside of us that like when you do exercise you kind of release a little bit of it you you don't have to think for a moment you can just like do that yeah and that really helped like for me that was like the starting point of okay, I can, I can get out of this. Like it felt like a little achievement. And that's yeah. the next thing, little achievements. You make a list, the list is long, you freak out, mm. you don't do anything of the list and then you back in bed. That's yeah. like an issue that I struggled with a lot. So I started, and this is actually advice from my therapist, you make the list shorter. What is the things you actually like urgently need to do? Yeah. And when you tick a thing off, you're excited about that. Mm -hmm. It's like you, you've done a thing and yeah. that's okay. Like you can't get everything done but you do it like step by step. And even the little things like watering the plants, that's yeah. a task done. I mean, these are the bit more obvious ones, which I think a lot of people struggle with, but it's like one of the most important ones is eating healthy or trying yeah. to eat healthy. Because the issue is like, yeah, okay, we're emotional. We want to like, we want a McDonald's. We mm -hmm. want to, but if you don't like give your body what it needs, how can you expect your brain to yeah. give you any sort of like, help with what you're struggling or dealing with and same with alcohol intake yeah. and now that one is a big problem because usually when people are upset what's the first thing you think about like oh drinking my problems nice away let's go to the pub yeah, yeah. come on yeah exactly come I on, am, girls, I, this, is, yeah. this is my big problem but like i from time to time i it's always the same thing it gets better for a bit and then it gets worse like mm. i would come home like and this is when i kind of realized okay you need to like change something like you know i'd come home drunk and then i i take my makeup off and then I'm suddenly in tears. Yeah. Like I just cry my eyes out. It, it comes back to you and it, it haunts you in a way. So like sometimes you just have to like put it aside for a bit. Like you can keep drinking, yeah. but like just for a little bit, maybe like ease off a little bit, you know? And that that really helped me. Also another thing for me is paranoia. Like I get, when I get depressed, mm. what starts to happen is I'll come to work and someone will just like, you know, maybe like be busy or like not say hi and I'll be like oh my god you're convinced is, uh, yeah, you, you know you start something. and that's a really important thing to compartmentalize like to not like expect your emotions to be kind of transferred to other people yes, like yeah. you know the way someone else says something to you in your head might come across a certain way but like you kind of have to like back off of that and be like I'm in a bad place right now I can't take these things too seriously because they probably didn't say it that way, yeah. but my brain just kind of accepted it in that yeah. way. How do you tell yourself that? Is it literally speaking to yourself and saying? Well, so my therapist mm -hmm. actually gave me a great tip for that. When someone, especially when someone emails you or messages you, yeah. but like it also works in conversation, read it in three ways. Oh yeah, or like Charlotte say says it back her to dad you. says yeah. that as his top like, tip yeah, as well. It's like, yeah. oh yes, yeah. And the second More one is fact, is yeah, is. fact yeah. from fiction. Mm -hmm. It's always like the number one, like, is, is it like because someone said hi how are you in a funny tone is that because they don't like me or is that because they are having a bad day you know yeah. I don't know that mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. why would I start like worrying about that that is none of yeah. my concern right now like yeah. I need to keep you know and that's what I mean with compartmentalize yeah. like sticking to like 
your lane for a little bit. Yeah. Like, and so d- these are the sort of things, like, for me, that get the ball rolling. And I do know for all those things to happen, you need to decide that mm. they're going to happen. Yes, and that's the, that's yeah, 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 that is the, the, the thing. I can say all the things. You can do all the things, but yeah. you need to be ready to, like, start doing them. And it will, like, you know, hurt a little bit in the beginning, but it will get better very quickly. Yeah. Oh, so, amazing. I mean, I hope... No, thank you for sharing. (laughs) My three things aren't, I feel like mine sound like really uh, boring and uninspiring compared to yours, but never mind. One, I never thought I'd say this, but I bought a pair of Crocs last week. Oh my God, yeah. (laughs) Don't think I'd ever say that sentence either. (laughs) I like an ugly shoe, but for me, Crocs have just always been, and I'm just like, I will just never wear a pair. They're the hardened shoes to me. Or like, I wore a pair when I had, I did like some white water rafting and even putting those on, I was like, I swore I'd never wear one, but obviously it was (laughs) Gen Z's love them. But yeah, then it was announced a few weeks ago that Simone Rocha was doing a Crocs collaboration. And I've got to say, I was quite, interested um so i did that usual thing like set a notification on my phone being like right they go on sale at 12 let's 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 get a pair um but then what i actually thought was really good i hadn't seen it happen before maybe it's more common than i thought but you know when like these sort of big launches go on sale and it is just almost a fastest fingers first kind mm-hmm. of thing yeah, and it's, it's like, like the taylor swift concert yeah or anything <laughs> like clothing drops you're just like oh yeah, yeah you do feel like, like you're yeah. trying to like yeah go to glasto or something just to get a pair of Aww. shoes or whatever it might be <laughs> but i got to the they all sold out on the simone rocha website honestly without within seconds i was like i got it in my bag then it was gone that I saw on the Crocs website you essentially sort of got you could add in what size you wanted which pair and then you had to put in like your email address your bank details like everything your address as you would if you were buying them and then they sort of entered you into a drawer oh yes I, I do this that. for trainers yeah see maybe it is just a shoe yeah. thing because I don't buy shoes really that nice. often but I've, really ne- I've never done that before but it did feel yeah fair because usually with that you're like oh some people who don't even want them have bought them they're like gonna be on pairs, ebay yeah. like you know for three times the price you know by friday sort of thing yeah a bad thing happened in the sense that i won a pair well, i even <laughs> can't win but anyway i got a pair i got the email and i was like Woo-hoo, i've got them i also don't know if they'll actually fit because croc sizes are really weird it's oh, like they? m something w something and it's like could fit a man's five or a women's oh, seven oh, so, so no that's how like, little we know about crocs well, that, i know well that's why i'm like i don't even know if i've got the right size then like 10 minutes afterwards i got another email and i got the second pair as well so now i've got they haven't arrived yet but i've got two pairs of Crocs oh it's almost 500 pounds just like disappeared <laughs> out my bank account which was definitely not meant to happen are you gonna wear them to the office if they fit I mean yeah <laughs> this is thing. I am actually really excited because I never like a tombola a raffle I never win oh, yeah. anything yeah anything but so it's, it's one of those you enter them you think like oh I haven't spent any money and I'm not exactly. gonna win anyway and then when the money comes out you're like I know it's, it's like, whoops. and I definitely won I mean it sounds gross I like them but one's got a heel and oh my one god hasn't. I'm sorry so how big a heel are we talking well, I don't know because I'm a bit a I'm a bit crap in heels as well so let's see I mean if they have crocs I'm like hopefully they'll be comfortable yeah but I think yeah once they've arrived I'll see if they fit like mm see which ones I might keep. I mean, I'd like to keep both, yeah. but let's see. If, for whatever reason, I can't walk in them, they're the wrong size, then look on the uh, Share Lux pre-love community because yes. I'll probably end up popping them on there. Gone from zero Crocs to potentially two. Two pairs. Yeah, <laughs> maybe wear them on the next podcast if they fit and look good. But yeah, that's one of my new noteworthy. Another was, I went to a dinner the other day for a new non-alcoholic wine alternative, Ooh. which is an Australian brand called Non, so N-O-N. Lots of non-alcoholic drinks are made a bit like decaf coffee where they make the product and then remove the right. alcohol mm. in the same way lots of decaf coffee removes the caffeine after it's been made whereas these ones have just never got any alcohol in at any stage so they're using lots of tea some of them are a little bit like kombuchas and just like lots of mm. other ingredients to kind of give each bottle an interesting note to it or just make you know sometimes when you have non-alcoholic drinks it does just taste like you're having a fizzy drink yeah that that that's going to be my question because I've actually never drunk a low or Mm non-alcoholic wine that tastes like wine so these I would say that's why they're calling it a wine alternative they don't taste like wine like you're not like ooh, but they can be paired with food like wine so they've got one that was like we started with a sort of 
fizzy rosé type, which is really nice for like raspberries in, which was nice. It mm. smelt really fruity, but wasn't really sweet. And then there was a sort of a white sparkling, a sort of orange wine sort of style. Well, like and then an amazing one at the end, which was... It had coffee in, a bit of cold brew coffee, and then we were all drinking it, and I was like, oh, great, I'm not going to sleep tonight. But actually, <laughs> I did. <laughs> but it had loads of other things, like cherry stones, co- cocoa, like lots of little things. But again, it's like nice. a really nice sort of like mm. after meal drink. Mm. But, but yeah, the branding's really cool. The founder's interesting. It's got an interesting story. But yeah, if you're looking for a non-booze drink, I would recommend. And then thirdly, I wanted to talk about Camille, which is an amazing new restaurant that's opened in Borough Market. I'm excited to go here. I've got a booking this weekend. Have you? Oh, it's really, really top notch. So it's the same team behind Duck Soup, which is mm. a really another amazing restaurant that people have loved for years and years. Yeah. But it's essentially a sort of lovely French bistro-y relaxed experience. Mm. It's not, I'm sure they've got good non-alcoholic wines <laughs> there, but <laughs> they did have a really, really interesting wine list, which was great. Um, the food's amazing. It's like the best steak tartare I've had in a really oh, long time. I love steak tartare. You know, tartare. sometimes, oh, for me, with a steak tartare, I can only have like one or two, so I'm looking at you, Vanessa, and no, you don't no, eat no, me. No, no, <laughs> no, I, I, I used to love a steak. I can like live through it if I can. Yeah, we, yeah. Said, sorry, I was just like, why am I, why am I yeah, talking like, to you? Describe it more. <laughs> <laughs> what did it taste like? But you know, well, for me I can usually only have like one or two spoons and I'm like okay that's quite rich I'm gonna leave it there but this it it had like so many crunchy peppercorns and lovely bits in it was like really delicious um deviled eggs are everywhere at the moment which I'm here for they've got one with smoked eel on which was delicious that's not a bit of me actually (laughs) people think they don't like smoked eel it's really good do you like smoked salmon no. Oh, okay, fine. <clears throat> I was going to say, if you do, then you're like, fine, I'll let you off. Um, <laughs> crab on toast, would you like yes, that? Yes, love crab on toast. Nice. That was really good. But even just like entire fish that are all really crispy and delicious mm. with like lovely potatoes, really Yum. good puddings. But yeah, would really recommend it. It's so romantic and gorgeous, like really yeah. dark lit. It's got like the nice sort of French bistro curtains, oh. candle lights. Yeah, really Cute. good restaurant. So, Is yeah. it hard to get a table? Well, you tell me. My <laughs> brother-in-law actually booked it, so Fine. I can't say. <laughs> I might have a look later. Have a look, <laughs> maybe try for a lunch or something. Yeah, but yeah. no, I think it's quite small, but and it's, yeah. you know, pretty mm. very popular. But I don't think it's like, right, you can't get it until 11pm in five yeah, but months' also, time. Some, also, sometimes when they when they open the bookings like a month or two months ahead, you can just pick a random day like a month away, yeah. and then you have something to look forward exactly. to. Exactly. Um, so, you know. I'm with you on that. Nice. I've done that at Bistro Freddy. I think I had to book it like oh, three yeah. months ago. <laughs> Maybe it's in June. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's a good thing. Sapna did that as well. I remember she's like, was it worth it? And I was like, yeah, it was brilliant. And then she booked it. She was like, I can't get a table for months. But yeah. when she actually went, it was great. Yeah. So yeah, when, when, you, when you went to Brito, I did I did that. I, as yeah. soon as I saw your picture, I was like, got a book. We're going on Thursday. Oh, good. No, oh, have you been before? <laughs> no, no, I'm very excited. It was, yeah. It so cute. Excellent. Get the pasta a la vodka. Okay. Rightio. So our next section is SL Picks, where we're each going to go around and talk about something interesting or fun we've seen across the Shilux network, whether that's TikTok or the site or the community. So yeah, Maya, again, I'll start with you. What have, sure. what have you chosen? My pick is our new video series, Style Insider. Yes. Where we go inside people's wardrobes. We've had Lucy Williams. I loved that one. one. That was so good. Um, And I've been told Monique is coming out very soon. Exciting. You can watch it on the YouTube channel, but also we cut it down for reels on Instagram if you want to check it out there. But I just love being nosy and going inside people's wardrobes and seeing things. It's not just about new product. It's about things that they've loved for 10 years and and they've Mm. never gotten rid of or they found in a market somewhere and this is a story behind it. I just think it's really really nice watch it's almost like the identity of someone yeah. like you're, you're looking yeah. into someone's life like yeah. the way also with Lucy I really liked how she described you know some of the bits and I was like oh, I it's cosy it. I think yeah. it's I like really a cosy watch it. yeah I liked because it sort of was Lucy and uh, Lou are oh, Lou sort of talking first about the pieces and then mm, delving yeah. in and then I loved like seeing the photos of her wearing it in different ways based on what she'd said earlier exactly. I, mean, I just love Lucy I think she's just yeah. She's one of the few people for me who anything she does or says, I am yeah. just like, what's that? What's that? Like, yeah, I'm sure. really interested in all her recommendations. Yeah. So I loved, I loved that segment. Really nice. Yeah, looking forward to seeing who else we get. I can't yeah. wait for Monique's because yeah. I think she finds yeah, the most amazing pieces no. and Great she nips that. and tucks them in a way that they're just mm. perfect. Yeah, it's her styling yeah. as well that yeah. makes them super exciting. Yeah. Ooh, Vanessa? 
Well, I actually, mine is the uh, one that you did. <laughs> I'm your biggest fan. <laughs> it was the TikTok about books when you went into Waterstones. Oh yeah, that was Which fun. I enjoyed so much. I love letting other people tell me what they've bought in stores and yeah. like the book version like I love when we do it with fashion but yeah. the book version is just like gives me so much joy because sometimes you know there's a lot of new books coming out and oh, you're like gosh, yeah yeah I mean it's running behind constantly I but know, it's nice yeah. to like get some of the classics mm. back as well that like you might have forgotten about sometimes it's great to know all the brand new things that are out but sometimes it's just as valuable to be like okay what's yeah. a little bit older but still worth sort yeah. of thinking about or yeah. investigating yeah. And bookshops are overwhelming every yeah. time oh you walk yeah. in. It's like, I don't even know. When you stand in front of the shelves and you just have, you know, the the titles and yeah. the authors, I'm like, I don't know what to pick. I actually find it even hard, like, doing research for new books. As in, I say doing research. That is sound makes it sound like I'm like spending a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> She's at home with all her boards, like, which book? <laughs> when I Google what yeah. book should I read, <laughs> I still find the lists online quite hard to choose yeah. from. so many. Because you can't get a real vibe for mm. what the book mm. is slash whether it's going to suit your personal yeah. Yeah. preference for reading. So I like how you speak to Canberra and describe it mm. in your own voice and it's way more engaging and I can understand whether I will or not enjoy yeah. it. No, yeah, no, that's interesting. Yeah. I do like Waterstones and I think Foils do it really well as well. You know, they do, and indie bookshops obviously do it impeccably, but those little sort of handwritten notes. Oh, that yes. People who work there yeah. are like, oh, I loved this one because of X, Y, and Z for fans of these authors. I think they're that's really cute, a really yeah. nice search and you don't get that from Amazon. So no, I you do absolutely do. don't. Yeah. Yeah. Good gifts. Okay, glad you enjoyed the feature. <laughs> <laughs> and this then... sounds a bit bad, but I've chosen one of my pieces as my SL pick, but Why not? not for not because I'm like, oh, what a brilliant feature. Even though I really enjoyed writing it, but just because it was a super fun subject to, that I wanted to write about anyway, which is the sort of current trend for food to just be like completely over oh. the top and just all about what it looks like and presentation and all those fun things. The girls who work on the wedding edition just happened to be writing a piece on food trends. So we we're like, aha, I'll write it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I interviewed some really interesting people. So there's um, a London food styling company called Hands London, who've done so many amazing events where they sort of serve everything on stainless steel which is a bit of a trend for the moment like those refi the oh, cups yeah. and everything but there's like lots of that going on everywhere else as well but like styling it like that you know Laura Jackson did a really good explainer video recently about um the current trend for butter molds like lots oh, yeah. of places <laughs> are just like, sort of creating these amazing sort of styled butter or like you know Imogen Kwok who is just an amazing food sort of I guess food stylist, a bit mm. of everything with food and fashion. But yeah, she's done like edible peanuts that I've had, which are sort of peanut pearls. So they're like oh. a spray painted silver, but they're peanuts, but oh. they're served like... So they would... look like a pearl. Wow. Exactly, and you eat them in a peanuts and they're like the table edit, who's another amazing person who does something similar. She did that Monica Vinader breakfast that everyone was sort of looking at on Instagram a few weeks ago because oh, yeah. it was everywhere. But I think their new collection celebrated pearls and she'd done like butter pearls and things. So just wow. like <laughs> taking, you know, good food, but just sort of elevating it and making it a big talking point, whether that's, mm. you know, at a wedding or an event but also I think they are like some of them are fun things you could just do at home if you just wanted to be super extra if you have like people a butter around because uh, <laughs> in the piece there was another there's a sort of Berlin based sort of fashion food styling company called Herlich Dining who I've seen a lot on Instagram and one of theirs they had like dangling baguettes which sounds dreadful but Ooh, looked like really cool in weird. the context <laughs> of uh, what they were doing but again in the piece like yeah obviously I can't imagine any brides to be being like let's get those dangling breads <laughs> eat them up <laughs> Yeah, have you hung so, up yeah. bread yet? Yeah. Can we just get Did that down? Did you just like it? pick your own yeah, bread? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't need flowers. I'll have baguettes. Exactly. So, yeah, some of them were quite over the top. I think, I mean, obviously you're married, Maya, but did you sort of take any inspiration from little or sort of wider trends you'd seen online, but just sort of taken them back three steps? I don't think we did in terms of presentation and anything sort of out there like yeah. that to be honest we were really focused on food yeah um and we wanted it to look nice Basically. but our whole menu was sushi related so we wanted it to be presented like we we're in pen yen essentially so yeah. that's exactly what yeah, we did yeah, yeah. it's not yeah. about being ridiculous and no. over the top it's about creating a moment exactly mm. and actually one of the girls i interviewed for the piece said like 
their whole thing. Yeah, there's all these like fun, extravagant things, but it's just about celebrating the ordinary moments yeah. and then making the celebratory moments even more of a yeah. thing. So that could be with a cake, whether even if that's someone's birthday or something, but just thinking about how can we present it? How can we pile them yeah. up or yeah. how can we... I also think with food... Get people excited. Why not? That That's the best way to do it. Instead of spending tons and tons of money on flowers yeah. and decor, yeah. that actually is quite bad for the environment. Yeah. Often just goes straight in the bin afterwards yeah, yeah. and dies. Yeah, it's true. Why not do it for food and then you eat it and enjoy it afterwards? It's way more sustainable. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, that was my that was my feature. Ooh. I enjoyed writing more than anything else. So this section of the podcast is called News Reviews. So I thought we could talk a little bit about... Um, Back to Black, which is the new film that's come out, that's um, Sam Taylor Johnson's new film. It came out last week, but it, I don't know if you guys saw any of them, but it basically had almost universal sort of trashed, mm. bad, terrible reviews see, across yeah. the board. I've got one here, which is from a really good film website and magazine I like called Little White Lies. And their sort of opening statement is that it's a pointlessly cruel hash of Amy's life. This miserable biopic claims to celebrate the life and music of Amy Winehouse, but instead serves as a ghoulish encapsulation of everything wrong with the music industry and the fame machine. I might have been interested in going to see the film because I do like sort of music biopics and general ones like that. I didn't actually see Elvis, but now I'm in my like... Austin Butler era. I was oh say. yeah, who is it? You should, you should, well, you should watch it. I, it took June two and him to be in a bald cap for me to get on board. But I'm here, um, and he was brilliant in Masters of the Air. But yeah, I will watch that, and I know lots of people liked it. But I think that so many music biopics can be like mm. a real celebration of a person's career and mm. life, even if they've got a really sad backstory or you know tragedy happens along the way. I feel like most of them still have this sort of, or any biopic for that matter, any sort of true story memoir on the screen, there's always usually... A kind of celebration or something. Yeah, yeah, and, you know, something that really gets to the heart of who that person was, mm. whereas I get the impression from the reviews I've read and various things that this sort of bypasses a lot of Amy Winehouse's incredible talent and sort of just focuses on some of the mm. gorier, grittier bits. Mm. I think that's the thing, trying to find, like, a, a balance between between the two, which from, I mean, I haven't watched the film, so I, I don't know, but from what I've read and what I've seen, people are upset because it's not like focusing on the right things in yeah. life and over exaggerating things that people might not want to see. I don't know, but I, like I said, I haven't watched it, so um, I can't say anything. Is that because you think they've made the film with the intention to try and entertain people or like shock people through how she was, what well, managed by her father and all of that sort of stuff, I'm, as opposed yeah. to try and tell the story, her story in a yeah. beautiful way. I'm not sure because I think, um, yeah, Mitch Winehouse, her father, comes across apparently quite well in this. And I think. Oh, really? Because the documentary paints him really well, this, bad. Have you seen the 2015 film? Yeah. Amy? Me too. So I. Obviously, you thought when Amy Winehouse was alive, I thought she was an immense talent. I wouldn't say I was a fan, though. Like, I didn't have her albums or mm. anything like that. But, you know, could obviously see that she was really talented. And I think, if anyone, I don't know if you were living in the UK at the time. I don't know what it was like no, in Germany. But when she was honestly just being hounded, she was in the paper every day, yeah, like being followed awful. around Camden, like, mm. you know, she didn't have much of a life in that sense. She was literally just being hounded all the time. But when I watched Amy, when that came out, it really just changed everything for me. Like watching all these amazing old home videos, just like how incredible she was, just seeing her voice always in this natural state, it's being amazing. But I think, yeah, as you were just saying, Maya, her parents or her dad especially does not come across well at all no. in that. And certainly her string of boyfriends and particularly Blake Field of Civil, who's a big focus of this film, mm. like he was... He's been credited, well, he said on in interviews that he was the one who got her into really hard drugs. Yeah. And I think that's kind of my problem with what I've read about this or heard about this is that it's kind of whitewashing that thing and making, it's oh. about Blake and Amy's relationship and how in love they were. And I'm sure it still shows other things that happen, but I think it's like sort of honing in on this love mm. story, whereas actually he was very much 
from what you hear, yeah. read and see in other documentaries, a sort of negative life force. It, it, from what I'm hearing, it feels like entertainment and a film is being prioritised over someone's real life and story. Yeah, and I know the actress Marissa Abella, she um, has said in interviews, like, it's an inter interpretation of Amy Winehouse. She's not trying to be Amy Winehouse. I think this review as well in Little White Lies says that she's, you know... That she, they actually think she's quite good in it, but I think it's just the rest of it that maybe yeah. doesn't quite work. And it's weird because did you ever watch Nowhere Boy, which was the John Lennon yeah. film that Sam Taylor yeah. Johnson did, which is where she met Aaron Taylor Johnson and now they're married. Yeah. But he was playing John Lennon, and I thought that was a brilliant that film. Was great. So again, that like she's really, really great. it's a bit disappointing, I suppose, because I thought she'd do a banging job mm. of this. But I mean, I will watch it at some stage because it's not yeah. fair to talk about a film negatively having it's, not seen it. But... I want to watch it. I still want to see it, but I am shocked at how badly it's gone down. I mean, yeah. I don't really remember a film getting one star to be positive, yeah. to be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I guess just for balance, you say, I saw on Instagram that Charlotte watched it over the weekend and said that she actually quite yeah. enjoyed it. Mm. So, you know. And now for our final segment, we're going to ask, answer some questions from our Shillux community. Um, for future reference, each week uh, there'll be an Instagram story that will go live and it'll say who's going to be on the podcast that week and you can ask each of the people any questions you like and we'll pick one each to talk through. So Vanessa, I'll come to you first. Somebody has asked you, I'm a 40-year-old woman and I'm looking to transition my life to photography. Have you got any advice? I love this. I'm like, <laughs> yes, you change your career. Like, yeah. if you want to live your dream, like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like there's never, like, it doesn't matter what age you are. If you if you find something you're passionate about and oh, yeah. you want to go with it, that's great. Choose a niche. That's mm -hmm. like my number. Because the problem is when people start getting into the creative industry, they want to do everything. Yeah. But it works so much better if you choose one thing and become really good at it. And then people will come to you for that one thing. Yeah. So choose your sort of, fighter like mm -hmm. what do you want to do <laughs> yeah. and then get some people together shoot something it, it it won't make you any money at first but it's important to build a bit of a portfolio and what you can do is submit your shoots to magazines there's a lot of magazines out there and I'm not just talking little magazines the Vogue's that mm -hmm. aren't like the main Vogue's like all smaller Vogue's do accept mm -hmm. editorial entries yeah. so like you don't get any money for it but you do get quite a bit of exposure and it adds to your portfolio yeah. so that's a very good way to like start to get into things and work with people get to know people and then once you've built a bit of a portfolio and you can also shoot by yourself you know anything yeah. you can do then it's really important to contact companies you'd like to work for and send them your sort of mini portfolio, yeah. tell them why you want to work for them and choose people who, you know, really align with your sort of style of photography. And you won't get a response 90% of the time because there's so many people out there, but like it, there you, will you be might, that 10%. Yeah. yeah, or you might get banked and then, you know, exactly. like six months later or so, yeah. you might be like, oh, hang on, someone emailed about that food exactly. sheet or something. It's just, and it takes a little bit of time. I mean, you can't expect to be successful in the next like two months. But like, yeah. if you have the time and the energy and you keep doing these sort of things, like eventually like it will pay off. And obviously the more you shoot with other people as well, they might know someone who mm -hmm. knows yeah. someone. This is the creative industry, isn't it's it? Like a, yeah, everyone, creating that network, yeah, isn't exactly. it? Yeah, exactly. You create your network. You, you might even be interested in, in assisting a photographer maybe mm -hmm. just to see how they work, um, really getting involved and then yeah, it'll it'll come naturally eventually. It's just a patience game. Yeah. Great advice. Maya, somebody asked you, have you got any good recommendations for a week away in June? Beach vibes, but not too expensive. One might be really obvious, but I think it's a safe bet for good weather, good food and good beaches. And that's Mallorca. Ooh, yes. It's yes. not that expensive. If you can be flexible with like the days of the week mm -hmm. you're traveling on, I think you can get good um prices on flights i'd recommend probably staying in an airbnb as opposed to a hotel because some of the hotels can be a bit pricier yeah. but i think the food and drink in general in mallorca is very 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 good like london standard yeah. but actually pretty affordable yeah mm. um so that's probably like my number one and then somewhere um me and callum went to quite a long time ago now but i feel like it's really untapped and really not touristy but beautiful is Ravinia in Croatia. Oh, nice. It's so nice. Oh, yeah. There's only sort of like 10 restaurants maybe, 
um, two beach options, but it's really not touristy, so That's you nice. can really relax. So if you're going for a week, you don't need 10 restaurants, no. do you? And it's got lovely accommodation. It's yeah. quite, like, boutique-y. I feel like it's really unknown and is still... Mm like really cool yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Nice. Oh, that sounds i love good. both places yeah i always recommend barcelona as somewhere to go for a quick bit of sun and um you know fairly affordable but it's more of a city break whereas yeah. mallorca you can actually do the whole like holiday beach vibe and then dip into harbor and have that bit more of a nightlife restaurant scene and then go back over mm. and relax on the yeah beach. that's nice you do a bit of both yeah 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 Ooh. I do need to go. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, summer holiday. Crying, crying I know, I'm on the countdown. I can't wait for some summer holidays now. And then somebody has asked me what's top of my restaurant hit list at the moment. I mean, yeah, I know I say it all the time, but there's just so many openings left, right and centre. It's exciting. But yeah, hard to keep on top of them all. But uh, three that I'm excited about. One is the Dover, which is a sort of very glamorous, gorgeous looking Italian-American restaurant that's opened. Mm-hmm. That was a former COO of Soho house has opened mm. it it's really hard to get into but everyone i know who has been has had a lovely time whereabouts is it so May- mayfair sort mayfair. of of course mm. yeah <laughs> that's <laughs> neck of the woods everyone like yeah the prawn cocktail but it looks very gorgeous and glamorous and sort of nice. candle lit mm. lots of velvet curtains on I the way in vibe, that yeah. kind of yeah. gorgeous vibe uh you mentioned bistro freddy earlier so they've just launched a new restaurant around the corner from our very office i know i really, really? want to go Great. Yeah. Yeah. Crispin at Studio Voltaire. So Studio Voltaire is a sort of gallery that's, yeah, just around the corner from here, basically. But yeah, Bar Crispin is part of um, the Bistro Freddy group mm. and they've got an amazing one in Spitterfields. And this is another sort of offshoot. It looks so cool in there. I've got a table booked for next week. But oh, yeah. Nice. I need to book one. Yeah, you just, work fast. I know. She is in there. <laughs> I'm in there. Uh, but no, it looks really good. And I think, uh, yeah, once oh, a few nice. people from the office have gone, I can imagine it will become a bit of a... A staple for us but yeah. yeah it looks it doesn't look exactly the same as bistro freddy but it's got that like lovely vibe to it like quite arty but bistro-y but mm-hmm. yeah again just like really nice menu with a bit of everything on something for everyone and then finally abc kitchens which has opened at the emery which is the new hotel in knightsbridge from the mayborn group who have the connell and claridges and the oh, barclay abc kitchens is an amazing like highly established restaurant in New York and the head chef has brought his concept concept over to the UK. So yeah, it's his first London launch Ooh. and yeah, it's part of the new amazing hotel that's open there this month. What so. sort of food is it? It's a bit of everything, but I think he his thing is sauces. So oh. he likes to create <laughs> I like, love that. amazing juice and what sauces. A niche. <laughs> yeah, but no genuinely like pea guacamole is like one of his Oh, sort of, I like, did signature read things. I actually read a feature on that in the Yes, it's in, yeah. 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 But no, he's um that sounds right up creative mistake. but not like wacky creative just like yeah, interesting. But, but yeah. Sauce is important. Sauce I is hate very dry fruit. exactly. Oh, yeah. It annoys me so much. And I like, put some sauce on it. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. So I think if you haven't been to New York, and I haven't been to his original restaurant, but yeah, I think it's a great way to get a taste of uh, New York in London. Nice. So, yeah. Great recommendation. Yes. I know. Yes. Writing those down. There we go. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, as always, we'll put so, links in the notes below <laughs> so everyone can look at what we've been talking about. Um, yeah, thanks both. I enjoyed that. Nice yeah. new, fresh format. Um, thanks so much for watching and listening. Do write any questions into the Instagram box and on the Shillette's community. And don't forget to rate, review, subscribe, tell your friends, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.